Hello, Just Too Good here. Today I have the LEGO 2000 catalog, so we got the actual catalog there, but this time I'm also taking a look at the Direct to Consumer catalog. And Direct to Consumer sets are sets exclusive to LEGO stores or shop at home. And so these are some sets that aren't exclusive to that, um, and those are found in the main catalog, which are these right here. You can see they have the A Wing Fighter and Gungan Patrol, but they also have some that I don't have, like uh, the Slave One. And then you actually got some sets that are only found in the Lego store, so, or really uh, shop at home, which in this case you would kind of call the number instead of going online. But I think you could still probably buy it online at this time, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but uh, you can see, for example, right here, Millimi the Fairy was a direct consumer set in the United States, and it retails for only $350, and it's not available in any store. And the same goes with these road sign supplement set. Also, the astronaut keychain, which is actually a set I have. That I've had this since I was little. Um, these, I guess, aren't direct consumer sets, but they're still sets that are, you know, um, I guess ones that they would really put out as good deals. And, you know, I do have that one reviewed, and it was only $6.75, which is a great deal. This one I don't have, which is actually a really cool little pack right there. I need to get that set. I will look on that for on eBay after this video. Um, the Town Folks, uh, $6.75 as well, so you got a lot of these minifigure packs. Then what seems to be, yep, more direct consumer sets, so sets exclusive to shop at home. Um, and so we got this Train Wash, which is actually a really cool set. I have not seen that one before. Also, you got the Train Track Snow Remover, which, again, I haven't seen that one before either, I guess because I don't really look at the train line. That was $10, and this one was $35. And this one I have seen. Um, I think this one was from the 90s, actually. Train Station, um, which was $47. Very weird prices. And then you have Railway Express, which seems to not be a direct consumer set, but still is a lot of money, $140, which is about how much, you know, a train today would be. Actually, train today, like these passenger trains, are usually cheaper than this. So a lot of people say, oh, Lego just got more and more expensive. Um, this is pretty expensive compared to stuff you would find nowadays. Uh, for this right here, but then again, it is 9V, I think, um, 9 volt. He also got some keychains, which it seems like the keychains are all direct consumer. Uh, the X-Wing Fighter, which is cool, um, only $33. Um, road and rail service truck, that's pretty neat. And uh, this is a spaceport set, countdown corner, which looks really cool. A small little astronaut set, um, which was probably just like a poly bag or whatever. And then you got some new in 2000 Dino Explorer sets. Um, this is a Dino Explorer. Um, well, actually, it just says Dino Explorer. That's the name of the set, which is $17. And Speedway Transport. And then right here, you do have some more um, direct -to consumer sets. And I think that's because these were more for a European market. So in the United States, they would be direct -to consumer. Um, so you could only get them on like calling them up or. Um, if they had the online shop then or the Lego store back then. And you can see they have Red Soccer Bus and White Soccer Bus, which those two are awesome sets. I always wanted those. You also got a mini tow truck and a flash speeder, which the flash speeder is actually not direct consumer. Now, since we got the little mini parts out of the way, let's get into the big baby right here, which is the 2000 catalog. All right, so let's get into the actual catalog itself. Around this time, I wasn't really into Lego, so there's going to be a lot of unfamiliar sets for me. But I will have some of them. And here, for example, this one right here, Fan Grandstand, I do have. Um, the stars uh, mean they're new for 2000. And it seems like this might have been a general Lego catalog. That's not just for the United States because, as we saw in that little pamphlet back there, that some of these weren't even, like, uh, wide release for the United States. So this one right here was a direct-to-consumer set. Um, this is a cool field. I love that. I wish I could get one of those basketball, or in this case would be a football field sets, but those would go for so much money, like new and sealed box. This, I've, I'm going to be honest, I've never seen this set before, <laughs> honestly. That's kind of a cool set. It looks like a little bit of like a stadium setup or something. Uh, you got a little cheering place, what seems to be like a filming tower. So I really like how they got not only the sports aspects of soccer, but then they got, you know, the more, I guess, uh, media aspects of soccer, like the buses and uh, this little kind of a filming station or whatever. And this looks like a little shoot and score set, which they've done a few times before. Um, this is kind of interesting. Uh, it seems like right here, can you store that on the back of your pants? What is that? It's kind of weird. I don't know. Um, maybe it just comes with a patch or something. That's pretty odd. If anybody knows exactly what that is, let me know because that's obviously a person with their hands in their pocket and that's their butt right there. And then they just kind of show this little 
very hard to see sports thing. I wonder what that's all about. Um, but you can see how that kind of works where you would uh, flick this thing and you can shoot it inside one of these scores. All right. And then right here, of course, we got Star Wars because the Lego Star Wars theme, you know, joined Lego Forces in 1999. And this is a year after that. So what we have right here is some sets that are available May 1st. So you could kind of think of these as like the summer sets. Um, Gungan Sub. Uh, these are actually, that's a 1999 set. But this one right here, you can see all the ones with the stars are those July, or sorry, July 1st sets. Um, so the MTT Gungan Patrol, which I've reviewed. Flash Beater, which I got to get because that's actually a nostalgic set for me because my cousin had that. And an AAT. Um, also a Naboo Fighter, but that one I think is from 99. So that's pretty interesting. Then we have some more Star Wars sets. So you got Moss Espa Pod Race, um, which looks like a whole bunch of stuff there. Sith Infiltrator. Lightsaber Duel, which is, I think, officially the first LEGO Star Wars set, um, because in set numbers and everything. Which I do need to get that one. I have that in Naboo Swamp. Uh, Anakin's Pod Racer, which is pretty easy to get. I just don't like the design of that. And Droid Fighter is one that's really easy to get, but I absolutely despise that set. I just don't like it. Um, and you can see this is when they started introducing Technic Star Wars sets. So you got a pit droid, a destroyer droid, and a battle droid. So that's pretty neat. And those are ages 8 and up. And it looks like you could kind of fold this out. Then they have more sets. And you can see they have a lot of Star Wars sets even back then in its second year. Um, a Wing Fighter, which I have reviewed. Um, that was in that direct consumer catalog. Desert Skiff, another set I have reviewed. Um, Millennium Falcon, a set I really want. And uh, the B Wing. Rebel Control Center, which I still have. I have it um, unbuilt um, because it's, it's a pretty messy build. So I don't know if I'm going to review it up here or I might just wait until I go get back home. So that should be coming up soon enough. Oh my gosh, this is like a little design right here. Lego Mania 2000. You can see it even carries on to Star Wars right there. That looks so cool with a little army of... Battle droids, which even though I don't like battle droids, I gotta admit that little setup looks pretty cool. Um, dang, this is just a really messy catalog. Um, we got more Star Wars. I'm amazed how many Star Wars they had back then. I actually didn't realize they had this much. Um, speeder bikes, which I'm bound to get soon. Um, this one's kind of hard to get. TIE Fighter and Y Wing. And X Wing Fighter, which was in the Dark Consumer catalog. Snow Speeder, which is these two are 1999 sets. This one is actually one that I have the second version of. I have the 2004 version. And this one I just reviewed uh, the other day, so that's pretty cool. Then you got some definitive uh, direct consumer sets, some Ultimate Collector Series sets. So you got the X Wing Fighter and TIE Interceptor, which were available July 1st, 2000. All right, now we're moving away from Star Wars, it seems. And we have Lego Ninja, which is before Ninjago. Sorry, I'm saying it the Jang way. And these sets are freaking incredible. And because of that, they are very expensive online, especially if you want to get one with the Green Ninja. There's like one little collector's set with the Green Ninja. That goes for like 80 bucks just because of that one Green Ninja. Um, but this one right here, you can see this is kind of like a little Stronghold. They have another Stronghold-looking set, um, which look pretty similar. Honestly, these two look really similar, but I wouldn't go with either of them because they both look beautiful. Um, this one I wouldn't really get because it's like a little catapult. This is cool. It's like a little warship. And then, of course, this is that... Uh, uh, was that in the direct consumer catalog? I think it was, um, but that's like a little minifigure pack, which is cool because they used to have minifigure collections even back then. And you got some early Knights Kingdom, which you would see right here. Uh, eh, I didn't really care about this early Knights Kingdom. I like the 90s castle stuff the best. The early 2000 ones, eh. Um, but this was really the only early 2000 castle sets that they had. This one right here actually is... Um, one I have, and I, I think that's a really bad set, honestly. If I had to be honest, I, I don't like that set. Um, that might be on one of those worst of LEGO sets, like kind of reviews, um, but we'll see when that turns out, probably in spring or something. And then we got this big castle for Knight's Kingdom, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, was re-released for Knight's Kingdom 2 um, as a royal castle or something like that. But yeah, a lot of them use these big plates, and I don't like those big plates. I like thin plates, especially regular base plates, which were still around back then. Uh, then we got Race, which eh, doesn't really look too good either. Um, honestly, are pretty juniorized, as people say. And 
wow, these, these do look pretty bad. This one looks okay, because I like sort of smaller sets. This one looks really bad. This looks like the Raven Racer, but like a worse version of that, and that was like a 94 set. This is like a 2000 set. This one looks pretty bad. I think one of these, though, has like this girl with like green hair that I really wanted. Um, so someday I will bricklink that. Um, ooh, Adventurers, which, if I had to be honest, the jungle theme, um, or sorry, Dino Island, this isn't jungle, this is Dino Island, is my least favorite out of all the Adventurers sub-themes, because they use the same thing that the Knights Kingdom ones use, which are these big chunky plates, which I just can't stand. Uh, but they did have some cool mold for the dinosaurs, you can see some, what looks to be a Triceratops right there. Um, the, the vehicles were a lot blockier than the other ones, they, they, they looked very much like a 2000 type vehicle from Lego. Um, the T-Rex is actually a really cool mold. I think they use that for a Spielberg set. And this long boat is kind of interesting in its design as well. Um, so if I had to get any of these sets, it would be this one or the big play set itself, uh, which is pretty interesting. But again, I don't like those big plates that they use right here. Uh, but it still has a pretty cool design. Um, I haven't seen much people cover this, honestly. Um, and then you got some little tiny sets right here. I, I do have... Which one is it that I have? I have... It might be this one? I don't know, you guys saw it in that big, my biggest hole ever video, the, the big mystery unboxing. And of course you do got some from 99, which are the jungle theme. This is a very good sub theme for it. Um, this set I really wanted. Um, these two are okay too, because they're more location based. And again, you can see they use the thinner plate, which just looks better. You got some spaceport right here, which is a really cool Lego Town sub theme, if not my favorite Lego Town sub theme of like the 90s, um, because these were 99, I think, not 2000. Um, and you can see how they use a lot of these base plates, which look cool. And I just love the simulation set, this big kind of shuttle right here. All of them look very cool. I have this set right here, and I think I reviewed it, um, which is a pretty cool little set. It's called like the Calm Link set. Arctic. Um, honestly, this is not a bad sub theme for 2000. Um, this is, of course, a town sub theme. I, I have one set from here. I think it's... Actually, I have two. I think I got this one recently. Was it this one? It was either this one or this one. And then back in the day, um, I remember as like a vacation gift, I got one, which is... is it? Oh, here you go. Here's the one that I got as a vacation gift. Um, this is the one I got recently for like... It was like eight bucks. It was probably in a hole or something like that. This is a really cool set because it comes with white base plates, which I really like. But it's also a nice kind of polar research place and you know the one they made in 2014 those were good too for lego city i actually really like that polar theme uh, if i had to be honest i think it might be my favorite of the new research lines like we have the volcano one this year uh we had uh the what was it what was volcano jungle this jungle 2017 volcano 2016 2015 was Spaceport and Diving, yeah, and then 2014 was the, the Polar one, and I think the 2014 City one, I think, was the best, the Arctic Research one. Um, anyways, to City Center, these are not, oh, these are, these are pretty bad, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I, I'm glad they tried something new, but you could see this, like, what's going on here? What are those plates, those big, chunky road plates? Definitely for little kids. And they just, they just didn't work well. Um, I don't think they sold well either because they sort of stopped doing this pretty soon after. I do have this set though. I, I do have this. This was from when I was younger. Um, I remember that one. Uh, but like this set right here, it just it's very, very juniorized. And they started doing four juniors, which used those different minifigures. And those were just kind of a flop from what I can tell. Um, these might be rebranded sets, honestly. I don't think those were released under there um, specifically, but I might be wrong about that. And these look like rescue type sets. I think I might even have this set um, just thrown in as one of those random eBay listings. But yeah, like this set in particular looks really bad, this little construction site. Um, so I'm not a fan of that. Now a theme I am a fan of is Rock Raiders. Rock Raiders is really cool for somebody who likes these underground Lego themes. I think this is a very good set. I, I can't believe I got that, what was it, like 40 sealed. Um, comes with an awesome rock monster, which is one of my favorite big figs. Um, you guys saw in that top 10 big figs video. Very chunky vehicle, which looks great. Um, this one, one of these right here I want to get. Uh, one with one of these silver kind of drills. Those look so cool. Um, this one I do have. And then the Rock Raiders HQ right here I might get in the future. I don't know where you can see it kind of right there. Um, these sets right here, the smaller sets, are okay. But I don't really need them because I already have the figures from there. You got some radio control, which uh, 
right here uh, is, it looks like just one little radio control set. That's kind of funny. And then we got a Lego train, which just was in the direct consumer catalog, I believe. Speed Slammers, which are Technic. Um, they've done that after this uh, 2000, from what I could tell. I, I know they did it with cars in like 2012. It's like the ultimate race set or something like that. Then Robo Riders, which were, I don't even know. It might be one of those predecessors to Bionicle. I'm not too sure about these. And let me see if there's any other ones. And then we've got some Lego games. Now, this one has an interesting one, which is this last one right here, anyways. Um, so this one, Lego Racers and Lego Rock Raiders. Um, those are really, like, people love those games. Um, those have a huge fan base. I never got into them. I don't even know what this Legoland game is about, though. I'm kind of interested in that. But this one right here, look at this. I'm not kidding. Lego Friends. And I think some of the girls in there share the same names as the girls from Lego Friends 2012. Like, there's a Mia, and I think there's an Andrea. It's kind of crazy. Um, it doesn't have much else to do with the, the new theme, but it's it's like, is this the prototype Lego Friends? So I always found that kind of interesting. And then we got a little advertisement to join the Lego Club for free. And I think at the end... Yep, just another advertisement for that. So that was it. Sorry, it was a little bit sloppy, but uh, it's a look at the 2000 Lego catalog. Um, I have to say, after looking through this, I think this was a worldwide catalog, and this one was the one that was for just the United States and Canada. Um, but I might be wrong. Actually, specifically, we could probably tell by looking at the back. Maybe, maybe it was just... Uh, United States catalogs, because you can see it has this attachment here. Unless they like attach this last page to just like the United States version, but then again, they do have ESRB here, so I'm not sure exactly how this worked out. If anybody knows if this catalog in specific is just a uh, United States or I guess North American catalog only, or if it's worldwide, I would really like to know in the comments. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.